on the lips of your children and on the lips of their descendants from this time and forever, says the Lord. May the Lord have a blessing for the reading of his word, for the edification of our souls in Jesus' name. We all say amen. 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 The title of this message is A Word for the Generation. A word for the generations past that we were just talking about the importance of relevance to the generation. It is important that we understand that God is always interested in, interested in communicating to the people at a level where they can understand. On the day of Pentecost. As we see the Spirit of God poured out amongst them that were collected there at Jerusalem for Pentecost, we see a miraculous phenomenon take place in whom the mockers began to criticize. As they heard the win, women and men there in the upper room giving God glory as the Spirit was poured out in tongues, coal and fire rested on them and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God gave utterance. Glory to God, they mocked them and said, oh, these men are drunk with new wine. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Peter stood up boldly and said, these men are not drunk as you suppose. Mm -hmm. As you suppose. Mm -hmm. They are under the influence. They just under the influence. <laughs> Glory to God. It's called the Holy Ghost. Amen. And the miraculous thing was it was a two-way miracle in the sense that not only were they speaking in languages that they didn't know, Glory to God, but it also could be that it was a heavenly language that everybody could understand. Uh -huh. Oh, praise yeah, God. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. It was a language that hit everyone where they were. Uh -huh. For example, it said they understood it, what they were saying, the wonderful works of God, in their native language. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Native language meaning if they were from Guatemala and they came to the United States, and spoke perfect English, they wouldn't have heard it in English, they would have heard it in their native language. Yes, yes. So what that tells me is, is God is interested in communicating where people are, where they can understand it. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. And that's why relevance, Pastor, is so important, and that's why our message today is for all generations. There's some interesting facts about Isaiah. Isaiah prophesied in the days of at least four kings of Judah. They were Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah. Just as the Bible has 66 books, Isaiah has 66 chapters. Isaiah received his commission to ministry by way of divine vision. In other words, commissioned by vision. Isaiah was a contemporary of two other prophets being Hosea and Micah. Isaiah's prophecy told about the coming of the Messiah and the message that he would bring. Isaiah foretold about the suffering sacrifice of Christ and his victory in Isaiah 53. And because that, or because it focuses so much on Christ, Isaiah is often referred to as the gospel of Isaiah. Glory to God, in Isaiah 4, 7, 14, he prophesied over 700 years before Jesus' birth that a virgin would conceive my that God, child. God, God. He prophesied about Cyrus, the king of Persia, and even called him by name 150 years before he was born. Mm -hmm. Isaiah gives us insight into God being manifested in the flesh when divine names were ascribed to the Son, names such as Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Yes. Glory yes. to God. Yes. I find it most interesting how the Son has the name Everlasting Father. Yes. Great yes. is the mystery of yes. God. Yes. 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 God was manifested in the yes. flesh. Yes. 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 Yes, yes, yes. 
Isaiah is quoted more than 50 times in the New Testament. And at the Lord's command, Isaiah walked around naked and barefooted for three years. Jesus. Think of that. You know, when you think of these prophets today, you know, they got their Bentley, Jets, Taylor made suits. They not doing naked. <laughs> <laughs> they not, they not going naked. See, that's a little bit too much. It don't take all of that. But God told Isaiah, imagine the level of commitment that you have to have to look in completely insane, not for one day, not for two days, not for three months, for three years. Talk about being so out to God. Where there is no self. Paul said, it's not me. It's the Christ that lives in yeah, yeah, yeah. Glory to God. I think I can get to my message now. Glory to God. <laughs> you know, some people ask, are there still prophets today? You know, we get into all this prophetic stuff. But I just want to just say, with Christ Jesus, Hebrews tells us from, from the writer of Hebrews as he chimes in, he says, God who has sundry times in life, diverse man, spake in time past to the fathers by the prophets, mm -hmm. having these last days spoken unto us by his son, mm -hmm. yeah. whom he have appointed all appointed heir to all things, by whom he also made the world. Yes. yes. Well, if we come back to our text, here's an interesting thing. It says, as for me, this is my covenant with them, saith the Lord. My spirit is upon thee. My words which I have put in thy mouth shall not depart from thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, seed, saith the Lord. The interesting thing about this passage is the word mouth is for, found four times. Now, in the Hebrew, there's a word for, it's called pa'a, and the word is for, it's the word meaning mouth. It's talking about the physical mouth. For example, in Exodus 4, 10, and 11, Moses said unto the Lord, O my Lord, I am not an eloquent, neither therefore, since uh, thou hast spoken to, to that servant, now I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. And the Lord asked him, who has made man's mouth? Now that word there is for the physical mouth. You know the two lips and the teeth and the tongue. You know, y'all know, y'all know. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. So if God calls you, here's what he was saying. If God calls you, he will qualify you. God is fully aware of your limitations, your frailties. Have you to stop time and to stop to think that Maybe God calls you because of your weakness. Maybe he calls you because of your friends. This is why Paul said, I would let a glory in my infirmities that the power of God may rest upon me. He said, for when I'm weak, then I find out. That's when I'm really strong. Then we have another word for mouth. The other word for mouth is jubar, and it's a word by implication. It means a matter. As spoken of a thing, or in the adverbial clause, it means a cause. Okay? According to the pulpit commentary, Dr. Cheyenne's commentary on Isaiah, he said the words intended are probably those of the entire Bible. In other words, all of God's revelation. So here the word mouth is not so much talking about your lips, your tongue, and teeth. It's talking about your confession. Yes. A relationship to God's promises and the covenant based on his word. Okay? Ask your neighbor, what are you confessing? Ask your other neighbor, what you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus said, do you not understand that whatsoever in a man's mouth goes into the belly and is cast out into the drop, but those things which out of the mouth comes forth from the heart. They defile the man, for out of the heart receive evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, death, false witnesses, and blasphemy. But if you're living right, this is what the word of says in the Hebrews, it says, 
Let us hold fast to our profession of faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised, and let us consider one another provoking unto love and to do good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. We're seeing the day approaching. You are gathered here together. Ladies and gentlemen, the United States has gone fuck crazy. They wow. shoot the people. They kill yeah, the yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two mass shootings on the same day. Yeah. We have entered the perilous time yeah. that the Bible is talking about. Yeah. This is why this is the word for all generations. Yeah. It don't make yeah. a difference whether you're one years old, whether you're two years old, whether you're Power, purpose, and perpetuity. Concerning power, the Lord said, My spirit is upon me. Uh -huh. The Lord, the spirit of the Lord, being on the person, gives that person the ability to receive things from God's perspective. Yes. This is what we call vision. Glory to God. As Pastor uh, Minister, uh, a little while ago, he was touching right on my message. Glory to God. Thank you so much. He was touching on my message because I also want to talk about John. John said, I was in the spirit on the Lord day and I heard behind me a great voice as the trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. What thou seest right in a book, send it to the seven churches. Yes, yes, yes. God was in the, John was in the spirit on the set on the Lord's day. Therefore, he was able to hear. See, when you're in the spirit, you can hear what the Lord has to say. He was able to hear what thus saith the Lord. And then by him being in the spirit, it gave him access to see. And that's why God said to him, I'm going to show you something. Not only are you going to hear it, but I'm going to show it to you. Yes. That's what we're talking about, vision. But you need power. Yes. And you need to be in right. the spirit yes. in order to hear or to see yes. what God is saying to his people. Let the church say, hallelujah. hallelujah. <laughs> you need God's spirit in order to have power. And then that gives you access to God's perspective. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. Yes, there are so many voices today. Jesus. There are so many voices talking heads on cable news, on, social media, the internet. This is why there is so much confusion in our communities and in our families. Because we are all allowing the wrong people to speak yes. into our lives. Yes. And we listen to people who do not have the spirit of yes. God. Yes. They cannot give you God's perspective. Yes. Open up and have God's perspective. Yes. Dr. Phil can't feel your joy. And I am can't fix your life. Yes, yes, yes. Then 
and see those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above and not things on the earth. You are dead and your life is here in the Christ in God. Yes. Oh, this was the prodigal son's problem. You see, the prodigal son wanted his best life now. And he couldn't wait for his daddy to die. He said, I ain't got time to wait for you to croak. Just pay me now. And he wanted his best life now. This is why Paul told the Philippians, I am straight and straight between having to depart and to be with Christ, yes, yes, which yes. is far better. Yes. The far better is the best. Yes. The far better is greater. Yes. The far better is much better than this. We've got something to look forward to. Yes. Why else come to church on Sunday if this is all we get? Yes. Why else come and sing the choir if that's all we don't hear? We come to see the we come to wait on the Lord. I'm looking for him every day. Because I know there's some better stuff waiting for me on the other side. So I'm not worried about my destiny. My destiny is, is heaven. But I'm concerned about my journey. I got to walk by faith and not by sight. The Bible says many other afflictions of the but the Lord shall deliver him out of them all. Let the church say hallelujah. Yeah. Purpose yeah. coincides with when you go on the journey. This is why the Bible says, but in your journey, God's purpose for you shifts according to the times. That's why it's not just about destiny. You don't get one place to stay. You own a journey. Glory to God. Life is full of swift transition. But like the song said, we got to hold on to God's unchanging hand. Glory to God. For example, when your pastor was under the leadership of, of Bishop Arthur M. Brazier, it was his season on that lay of his journey to study to be quiet, learn all he could about serving God, learn about the ministry, all the life lessons and struggles, and all the failures and victories. This all was part of his making yes. to bring him here. Glory to God, but he, like you, is still on a journey. Yeah. He's not stopping now. He don't know how long he's going to be here. I don't know how long you're going to be here. We don't, tomorrow's not promised. We are traveling through on a journey. Tell your neighbor, ain't no stopping us now. Perpetuity. What do I mean by project perpetuity? The minister. 
pastors, the elders, the deacons, the servants in the church. Your purpose is to catch the light that comes off your pastor. Your purpose is to catch the vision that he is casting in the name of Jesus in order to perpetuate perpetuity. It got to go from him to you. That's the only way it's going to last. That's why it's a word for all generations. Everybody got to catch the vision. Have you ever been in a show? Glory to God. You got the projector. It's projecting an image onto the screen. You are the screen. He is the projector. God, the one who loaded the program. This is a message for the millennials. This is a 